All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry for um, being a few minutes late here. I'd like to call this meeting to order. And we will begin with the roll call of commissioners. Uh, after I call your name, please reply here or present and confirm that you can see and hear me. Um, Commissioner Cox. Come back. Um, Commissioner Burns. Present. I can see and hear you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hughes. Um, Commissioner Ponce. Present, I can see and hear you. Great, thank you. Commissioner Rubin. Present, I can see and hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Tolliver. Present, I can see and hear you. Um, and uh, Commissioner Ferris out, I believe, today. And we'll come back. I don't see Commissioner Cox yet. So we'll begin with the statement. Chairman Wong is traveling today and asked that I chair today's meeting in his absence. Um, and here's the statement. In 2020, Governor Pritzker signed Public Act 101-0640, making certain amendments to the Open Meetings Act so that we, along with other boards and commissions, can continue to host virtual meetings during the COVID-19 public health emergency, provided that certain conditions are met. One of those conditions that is that I, as vice chair of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks, determined that an in-person meeting of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks and its permit review committee are not practical or prudent. I wanna make sure our virtual meetings meet all the conditions of the Open Meetings Act as amended, therefore making a determination pursuant to section 7E2 of the Open Meetings Act that an in-person meeting of this Commission on Chicago Landmarks and its permit review committee is not practical or prudent. Similarly, I am also making a determination pursuant to seven to section 7E5 that because of the disaster as declared by the governor that is infeasible for at least one member of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks or its chief administrative officer or its chief legal officer to be physically present at the meeting place for either meeting in as much as there is no physical meeting place. Pursuant to a resolution adopted by the Commission on Chicago Landmarks on June 4th, 2020, Regarding the chairman's emergency rulemaking powers, Chairman Wong issued emergency rules governing the conduct of remote public commission meetings and provisions for remote public participation, effective February 18, 2022. These rules are posted on the commission's website. In line, in line with these emergency rules, today's regular meeting, um, regular commission meeting is a virtual meeting being simulcast to the general public via live streaming. Commission meetings have been held virtually since May of 2020. Meetings are structured to minimize the chances for technical difficulties. Members of the, of the general public have been encouraged to uh, submit written statements in advance of the meeting. And these have been posted on the commission's website and are available for viewing during the virtual meeting at www.chicago.gov ccl. Per the emergency rules, verbal statements by the general public for all agenda items will take place at the beginning of the meeting. So all those wishing to speak at today's meeting should be signed into the Zoom meeting at this time. Before we hear the staff presentations and um, go over agenda items after which we will ask to hear from owners or applicants and their teams, we will open up the floor to members of the general public who wish to comment about the items on today's agenda. On today's agenda. Comments should pertain only to the agenda items. Members of the general public uh, wishing to comment should use the raise hand function of Zoom to indicate that they wish to speak. Members of the public, uh, not connecting via computer, smartphone, and instead phoning in uh, should press star nine to activate the raise hand function and, and do the same to deactivate it. I, the meeting facilitator, will call out the names one by one and unmute those people. Once unmuted, speakers should give their full name and organization if any they represent. Each speaker is allocated three minutes to speak. Once all members of the general public wish you to make a comment <clears throat> have been given the opportunity to do so, we will go through the agenda. And I would ask that owners and, or applicants and their representatives, as well as all of them wait to speak until after staff presentations um, have been made on their agenda item, and then we'll call on you. Are there any uh, members of the general public who would like to make comments about agenda item two 
uh, the report from the Department of Planning and Development for the Natch House at 1700 North Hudson Avenue. Uh, let's see, one. Uh, Preservation Chicago. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. This is Max Chavez, Director of Research and Special Projects at Preservation Chicago. Um, I just want to offer up some brief comments reinforcing our support for the uh, future landmarking of the Walter and Don Clark Netch House at 1700 North Hudson. Uh, as stated at last month's meeting, Preservation Chicago very much endorses the landmarking of the Netch House uh, as a symbol of the extraordinary lives of Walter and Don Clark Netch, as well as an example of some of the best modernist architecture that Chicago has to offer. Moreover, we continue to wholeheartedly support the specific decision to consider the Netch House's interior as part of this landmarking designation. The interior of the Netch House is so thoroughly crucial as to why the home's architecture is so important, especially as a prime example of Netch's field theory approach to design. Um, and, and not preserving the space through landmark protection would fall short of truly honoring the site's significant nature. Uh, so we're glad to see that that's been being uh, given full consideration. As we noted uh, about two weeks ago or so at the most recent hearing for um, suggestion of Chicago landmarks, we're also very concerned about the future of Taft Hall at UIC, which is another of Netch's designs. Uh, that one carried out in a very impressive brutalist style. It becomes more and more apparent that modernist architecture, even if designed by our most important architects like Walter Netch, face a very real threat here in Chicago as the vast majority of it is not recognized by the CHRS. So as this threat looms over uh, Netch's work at UIC, um, we are encouraged by the fact that Landmarks is taking uh, very proactive steps to protect his work um, elsewhere in the city before it faces the possibility of demolition. Uh, thank you very much. We look forward to the next steps in the landmarking process for the Netch House. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the general public wishing to speak on agenda item two? I'm seeing none. And um, we will move on to uh, general uh, agenda item three. Are there any members of the general public who wish to would like to make a comment on agenda item number three? Uh, the report from the Department of Planning and Development uh, on Promontory Point located at East of South John Baptist uh, uh, Point Disabled Lakeshore Drive between 54th and 56th Streets. Seeing one, um, Preservation Chicago again. Hi, thanks. This is Mary Lou Seidel. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> again, my name is Mary Lou Seidel. I'm the Director of Community Engagement at Preservation Chicago. Thank you, commissioners, for this opportunity to testify in support of landmarking Promontory Point. Built in the 1920s and 30s, this man-made, natural-feeling peninsula features a rock platform retained by round wooden piles with a steel whale and a limestone stone step revetment in tiers rising from the platform up to the parkland. The historic stepstone revetment is unique and the only remaining stretch of the once eight-mile Chicago lakefront revetment. This functioning limestone revetment should be protected and restored. Throughout its history, Promontory Point has offered an extraordinary place to gather, relax, play, swim, and enjoy remarkable views of Chicago's skyline to generations of city residents. Alfred, Alfred Caldwell's prairie-style landscaping with a meadow and council rings create a magical place that people from all over Chicago enjoy year-round. Caldwell's lily pool at Lincoln Park is a Chicago landmark a testament to the significance and value of his work. The Emanuel Buxbaum Comfort Station Fieldhouse is a remarkable design that inspires the feel of a lighthouse on this iconic point. On a personal level, I am the youngest of 10 children raised by a stay-at-home mom and an elevator union father. I grew up in the Belmont Cragen neighborhood on the Northwest side. 14 years separate me from my oldest sister. When I was talking to my older siblings about Promontory Point, they recounted many stories of their own time enjoying Promontory Point in the late 1960s and early 1970s. I spent not nearly enough summer nights in 2022 open water swimming off the point. The glory of community and leisure space combine at the point, creating a timeless space to enjoy Lake Michigan and views of the skyline. Promontory, Promontory Point's significance as a remarkable lakefront asset spans generations. It has always and will always be a treasure to people living, working, visiting, or playing in Chicago. 
A Chicago landmark designation will ensure that this precious resource gets the attention to restoration and not replacement of the limestone revetments and the historic character of the point which makes it so remarkable. Our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren deserve the opportunity to see Promontory Point in all its glory, just as we, our parents and grandparents, did before us. Thank you in advance for your consideration of this nomination. Thank you so much. Are there any other uh, members of the public wishing to speak on agenda item three? Um, seeing none, um, we'll move to uh, agenda item four. Thank you. Are there members of the uh, general public who would like to make a comment on agenda item four, the final landmark recommendation for Greater Union Baptist Church at 1956 West Warren Boulevard? Um, seeing a few. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ward Miller. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? We sure can. All right. Uh, well, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks. I'm Ward Miller, Executive Director of Preservation Chicago. We at Preservation Chicago enthusiastically support the final landmark recommendation for the Greater Union Baptist Church located at 1956 West Warren Boulevard on Chicago's near west side and part of the Chicago Park Boulevard System National Register District. Greater Union Baptist Church has been a cornerstone of Chicago's near west side for generations and has endured many changes in the community over the past 137 years including vast urban renewal projects, social unrest, and riots following the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., along with the expansion of multiple institutions surrounding this magnificent church. It's a testament to the long-term commitment of its leadership and congregation that Greater Union continues to service the community over, over the past nine decades in which it has been located in this historic structure. Constructed in, the rich, constructed in the Richardsonian Romanesque style with its high gables of richly colored red brick, ornamental terracotta, and sandstone, the building is remarkably beautiful and an elegant structure. The organization of its principal facades along Warren Boulevard and Damon Avenue is highly disciplined and further embellished with a variety of arched openings, often filled with highly decorative art glass windows. Its beautiful volumes are a commanding and monumental presence. Greater Union Baptist Church is truly a remarkable structure, modern for its time, and a one-of-a-kind column-free interior sanctuary with its wood beam ceilings uh, resembling almost a fine piece of furniture. Also, its original 1886 brass chandeliers, original organ case, curvilinear pures, pure, <laughs> pews, and richly colored art glass uh, by the firm of Macaulay and Miles. Um, we also want to point out that this was a building by William LeBaron Jenny, the father of the skyscraper, who built the first skyscraper building on LaSalle Street. This incredible church came one year after the design and completion of the home insurance building. So it's really a remarkable work of Jenny with so many of his buildings uh, designated Chicago landmarks. We also included William LeBaire and Jenny's work in our UNESCO World Heritage nomination, which Preservation Chicago was a part of uh, back in 2017, and a final determination will be coming soon. But this is an important building that we want to celebrate, and our hats go off to uh, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Dr. McRae, uh, the congregation and the community of uh, Greater Union Baptist Church. And also to, we want to recognize uh, Mr. Matt Crawford, uh, who worked with us uh, and cre created a most remarkable landmark designation report for Greater Union Baptist Church. Uh, kudos to the department and the city of Chicago on this landmark recommendation. Thanks so much, Mr. Miller. Um, I want to take a minute to recognize that Commissioner uh, Cox has joined us um, for the record. And uh, we have another uh, member of the general public that would like to speak. Mr. Achilles, please introduce yourself. Uh, Roth Achilles, you have to unmute yourself, please. Good. I'm sorry, I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank you, commissioners, for giving me the opportunity or allowing me the opportunity to speak on this very significant church in Chicago. I'm an independent art historian, architectural historian, but I've worked on and helped uh, 
Chicago sacred spaces for many, many years, and, um, and particularly interested in stained glass windows. But Greater Union is such a superb example of the brick and masonry technology available in Chicago in the 18, late 1880s, of which William Le Baron Jenny was one of the great leaders. It also has superb terracotta work in it, and the open truss system that Ward mentioned inside, that's a non-supported, a column-supported interior, is architecturally and from an engineering standpoint, a forerunner of what happens just a few blocks from the, this great church, the United Center, which is also a big open space. And that kind of open space was developed in Chicago to a great extent. It doesn't have uh, 16th and 17th century precedents except in certain sacred spaces. But as a, um, as a other sacred space in the Richardsonian Romanesque tradition, it's a superb example of this brick, terracotta, and open truss system that makes Chicago such a leader in architecture. And uh, it can contribute well to the world heritage possibilities of Chicago's architecture, of which there are numerous examples, and this is one of the great ones. So thank you, for commissioners, for giving me the opportunity to natter on about this fabulous building for a couple minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Achilles, for your statement. Um, uh, I don't see any other uh, members of the public wishing to speak on this item. Um, so we'll move to uh, agenda item five. Are there any members of the general public who would like to comment on agenda item number five? The program committee report on, on the National Register of Historic Places nomination recommendation for the Laramie State Bank Building at 5200 West Chicago Avenue. Um, seeing one, uh, Mr. Miller. Yes, uh, good afternoon again, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission on Chicago landmarks. I'm Ward Miller, Executive Director of Preservation Chicago. Uh, we at Preservation Chicago support the nomination of the Laramie State Bank to the National Register of Historic Places, located at 5200 West Chicago Avenue in Chicago. This Art Deco Chicago landmark was also one of our 2019 Chicago 7 Most Endangered Buildings. Um, as its vacancy and overall condition alarmed us greatly, even though it was a designated Chicago landmark, uh, we've been working with the city over the last six years and members of uh, the Department of Planning and Development Historic uh, Preservation Division, specifically uh, Deanna Cavallo, uh, Matt Crawford, and and the, the and Candlin, the, the, the great staff at DPD, uh, towards finding a solution uh, to this uh, really troubled property that has just fallen into such disrepair and also in an area of great disinvestment. Uh, so we're grateful uh, to the department and the Invest Southwest program for resolving this really difficult situation um, uh, and to envelope it into part of a new development opportunity, which will be transformative to the Austin community uh, in which this landmark sits while also preserving and revisioning a Chicago landmark. So therefore we at Preservation Chicago very enthusiastically uh, support the recommendation of the Laramie State Bank to the National Register of Historic Places. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, seeing no additional uh, hands raised for this item. Um, I believe that's all the members of the general public who, wish, who have indicated they wish to speak on agenda items today. Um, and therefore this concludes the public comment portion of the meeting. And we will go to the first item on the agenda for us, which is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, our regular meeting on January 12th, 2023. Um, and I'd like uh, to request a motion to approve the minutes from January 12th, 2023 um, from our meeting. Do we have a motion? I make the motion. Commissioner Tolliver, thank you, has made a motion. Uh, do we have a second? I will second it, uh, Commissioner Cox. Seconded by Commissioner Cox, thank you. And we'll do the roll call. Um, Commissioner Burns? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rubin? Yes. Commissioner Rubin is a yes as well. And uh, Commissioner Ponce? 
Yes. Commissioner Fon says yes. I'm a yes, and the motion carries unanimously and the minutes will be posted on the commission's website. Um, moving to agenda item number two, the report from the Department of Planning and Development on the Netch House in the, in the 43rd Ward, 1700 North Hudson Avenue in Alderman uh, Tim, Timmy Nudson. And Commissioner Cox has the report. Um, uh, thank you. Um, good afternoon. The Department of Planning and Development finds that the proposed landmark designation for the Nesh House supports the city's overall planning goals for the surrounding neighborhood and is consistent with the city's governing policies and plans. The Nesh House is uh, a single family home that was constructed in 1974 as the residence of uh, its designer, uh, architect Walter Nesh, and his wife, state politician Don Clark Nash. The Nashes uh, made significant contributions to their respective fields. Uh, as a general partner of Skidmore, Owens and Murrow, Walter Nash uh, is well known for his design of the US Air Force Academy and the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, Don Clark Nash uh, was an attorney, a professor and a trailblazing state politician who was a tireless advocate for good government principles. Uh, the Nash House is located in the Lincoln Park community area and the Old Town neighborhood. The house is also located in the Old Town Triangle District, which was designated as a Chicago landmark in 1977, three years after the Nash built uh, house was built. When the district was designated, there was insufficient perspective of time to evaluate buildings built uh, after 1930s. And the Nesh House uh, is regarded as a non-contributing building in the landmark district. With the passage of time, uh, the Nesh House's historic and architectural significance has become uh, crystal clear. Designation of the building will ensure uh, that it will be preserved. The Nesh House is part of a family of modern and postmodern infill residential designs in the Old Town Landmark District. In addition to uh, Walter Nash, other noteworthy architects from Chicago also design architecturally progressive residences in Old Town around the same time for themselves and for clients in the 1960s and 70s. Our planning work at the Department of Planning and Development is committed to design excellence, which includes strengthening the culture of our communities, committed to cultural longevity and environmental sustainability. These goals are also consistent with the landmark designation of historic works of high quality design exemplified by uh, the Nesh House. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cox. Um, <clears throat> commissioners have any uh, questions for uh, Commissioner Cox or any questions about the project before we hear from um, the owners? Seeing um, none, um, I know that the owners are here. Um, did you wish to comment? Is it uh, Mr. Force, Mr. Uh, Smith? I don't, I don't see them. Um, not seeing them. I, I know the Alderman is also here. Um, Alderman Nudson, um, you, you wish to make a statement? Yeah, I'd love to. And, and thanks so much for letting me join. I, my statement will in no way be as artful as Commissioner Cox's. It's a hard act to follow. So what I wanted, I, we've got a lot in the community on this and we're excited. So I wanted to come to just say I wholeheartedly support um, the Netch House receiving Chicago landmark status. Um, it's an incredible and unique piece of mid-century modern architecture in Old Town Triangle and within the Old Town Triangle Landmark District. Selfishly, I love seeing this individual landmark uh, made within the Old Town Triangle District because it's where I live. 
Um, but this one is especially unique, I want to note, because it's not only the exterior of the home, but also the interior of the home that, that we you know, would love to see landmarks. Um, I also want to note, too, just again, the, um, the significance of the original owners and, and the historical significance of this. Um, Don, Don Clark Natch is a political icon. She served in the state Senate. She was Illinois comptroller, and she was the first woman to be nominated by a major political party to run for governor. Um, she was a mentor to many women going into careers in public service. And I've talked to a few 43rd Ward residents um, about this landmarking that really viewed her as a mentor. She was also a really strong hero within the LGBTQ community. She's on the LGBTQ Hall of Fame for Chicago. Um, she, you know, was iconic for always uh, for several years leading the gay pride parade, riding in a car with a banner that said, I'm not running for anything. And um, she's just someone that we really look to as, as a hero that came from our community. And Walter Netsch, of course, as, as Commissioner Cox said, he was a legendary architect. He, he designed brutalist buildings with Skidmore that are known worldwide. And he also was civically engaged. Mayor Harold, Harold Washington appointed him as commissioner of the Park District. I want to give one story, and then I promise I won't take up too much time. But talking in with uh, with a ward resident who knew Don Clark really well, Wendy Cohen. Don Clark was a, a bit of a, a mentor to her. Um, she had a lot of stories about time spent in the house during uh, the time it was it was owned and lived in by Walter and Don Clark. And she told me a story that I thought was just great in that there was this tension when Don Clark moved north from where they were previously that um, they were going to be building a house without any doors. Walter didn't want any interior doors. And finally, the couple negotiated that they would have interior doors for the bathrooms. But this was somewhat of a, a couple battle. And it was important because they were also well-known hosts of parties in the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, call me simple, but bathroom doors are usually a good thing when you're hosting a lot of events. Um, so to close, I'll just say that you know, in the 43rd Ward, we're really proud to be home of the most historical landmark districts of any ward in the city. A ton of legwork goes into securing this heritage um, and also residents seeking individual landmark status. So I want to thank all the community members and activists that dedicate so much time and energy to doing this. Um, I also want to congratulate the owners, Will Forrest and Mark Smith, on their work to protect this landmark. On behalf of the community, and we've gotten a lot on this, we thank you both for this big investment the dedication, passion, and time that's gone into this, this project. So we're very excited. We highly recommend the status and, and thanks for letting me speak on its behalf. Well, thank you, Alderman. I appreciate the, the story uh, as well. Um, I don't, um, commissioners, I don't see the, I don't see the owners here, um, but uh, see, not seeing them. Uh, do we have any questions for, for the Alderman? Uh, Um, seeing none. Um, if there's no further uh, questions, I, I'd like to request a motion to accept the department's recommendation for the next house and take the next step in the designation process to request consent from the property owners. Um, do we have a motion? So moved, so, Commissioner Rubin. Seconded, Commissioner Burns. Commissioner uh, Rubin has moved, seconded by Commissioner Burns. Uh, let's do the roll call. Um, Commissioner Ponce. Yes. Commissioner Ponce is a yes. Uh, Commissioner Cox? Yes. The yes. And Commissioner Tolliver? Yes. Um, all right. And I am uh, an enthusiastic yes as well. Um, and the motion carries unanimously. Um, and um, thank you. Thank you. This is great. Um, We'll move to item number uh, three, the another report from the Department of Planning and Development on Promontory Point in the Fifth Ward um, at East uh, San John Baptiste Point Dusable Lakeshore Drive between 54th and 56th Streets. Alderman Leslie Hairston and Commissioner Cox has an, the report. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Department of Planning and Development uh, finds that the proposed landmark designation for Promontory Point supports the city's overall planning goals for the surrounding Hyde Park community area and is consistent with the uh, city's governing policies and plans. Promontory Point is a lakefront peninsula located in the Hyde Park community area at the south end of the 600 acre 
Lakeside uh, Burnham Park. The site was constructed uh, from artificial lake fill edged by stepped limestone revetments and uh, was completed in the late 1930s with money from the Federal Works, the Federal Progress Works, the WPA program. A metro station a typology study uh, approved by the Chicago Plan Commission in 2014 identified 55th to 50. Six to 57th Street uh, metro stations, five blocks uh, to the west of the promontory point, as a major activity center located outside downtown with a balanced mix of residential, commercial, and employment generating uses, with residential development typically provided in mid to high rise buildings. The pedestrian or, uh, environment surrounding the station was no noted as an important aspect of the area. A uh, promontory points pedestrian accessibility as established with the 55th Street underpass aligns with that character. More recently, DPD has embarked on We Will Chicago, a citywide planning initiative, which is now in draft form. One goal of the plan is to maintain and expand green space, uh, natural resources, and conservation efforts for the benefit of all Chicagoans. Promontory Point is part of Burnham Park, created as public parkland for the benefit of all Chicagoans, and has been embraced and continually put to use by citizens from its inception. Landmark designation would further signify the city's commitment to maintaining this green space for all. DPD has also provided input to the Chicago Park District's uh, 2018 update uh, to the South Lakefront Framework Plan, which looks uh, just south of Promontory Point to Jackson Park and the South Shore Cultural Center. This plan sought community input for uh, a vision which balance a broad diversity of park users from recreation to refuge seekers uh, and from regular uh, regulars to those just visiting. The landmark designation of a promontory point aligns with several of the guiding principles underlying that plan. A uh, one, integrate buildings and landscapes to shape beautiful parks that provide an enhanced quality of life for their users. Another underscore the many natural assets of the lakefront park landscape. Another celebrate and reconnect with the water. Additionally, uh, to reinvigorate the parks as a global attraction uh, with cultural destinations and historically significant landscapes. Another draw on historic use, character, and design philosophy uh, to inform the future. Uh, and finally, to continue to promote spaces that connect the community with nature. Uh, the plan updated, uh, the plan update was part of an extensive review process undertaken by the city of Chicago for conversion of a 19 acre site in Jackson Park for use as the Obama Presidential uh, Museum campus. DPD is one of the agencies monitoring the memorandum of, of agreement, which resulted uh, from that effort, which lays out the improvements to be undertaken by the Chicago Park District, the Obama Foundation, and the Chicago Department of Transportation. Currently, improvements to Jackson Park have included road, uh, roadway realignment, site work for the Obama Presidential Center, work on a historic interpretation center for Jackson Park, and conceptual plans for Midway Plaisance improvements. When these and other projects have been completed, they will support a revitalized Jackson Park and strengthen the surrounding area, including Promontory Point. Therefore, uh, 
uh, the Department of Planning and Development finds that the proposed landmark designation of Promontory Point supports the city's overall planning goals for the surrounding Hyde Park community area and is consistent with the city's governing policies uh, and plans. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cox, for sharing that report and some of the update, um, updated plans for public spaces around there. Um, any questions for Commissioner Cox? Um, Commissioners, about the report. Uh, seeing none, um, the Park District, thank you, Commissioner Cox. Um, the, the Park District sent a statement uh, to the commission and I'd like to read that into the record. The Chicago Park District, along with our project partners, the Army Corps of Engineers and Chicago Department of Transportation have a role in ensuring that Promontory Point continues to remain the community asset that it has always been. We are committed to continuing to work closely with the community on a design that properly respects the historic nature of the point. The Chicago Park District has met numerous times with community supporters of Promontory Point over the years and supports the community's enthusiastic efforts to add city landmark status in addition to the national register listing it already enjoys to this important cultural resource in our park system. As the property owner, the Chicago uh, Park District Board may grant its consent to the city of Chicago to give landmark designation to the Promontory Point property. It is anticipated that um, the board will consider granting such consent at its next board meeting, which is Wednesday, February 15th. <clears throat> the project partners are confident that the city's design, coupled with the third with third party review, will result in a rehabilitation plan that preserves the limestone and historic character of this important segment of shoreline in a manner that is consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards for historic preservation. And with that, um, any questions from commissioners? Um, seeing none, um, I'd like uh, to request a motion to accept the department's report for uh, the promontory point. We have a motion. Um, I move the motion. Excellent, thank you, Commissioner Tolliver's motion. Do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Ponce. Commissioner Ponce has seconded and we'll do the roll call, thank you. Um, Commissioner Burns. Yes. Mr. Burns is a yes. Um, Commissioner Rubin. Yes. All right, thank you. Commissioner Rubin is a yes. And Commissioner Cox. Yes. Yes, and thank you. And I am a yes as well. And the motion carries unanimously. Thanks everybody. Um, moving on to um, uh, next agenda item number four, which is the final landmark recommendation for the Greater Union Baptist Church in the 27th Ward, 1956 West, West Warren Boulevard. And this is Alderman uh, Burnett. Um, and I, Matt Crawford has the report. Thank you, Chairman Vekovich. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. So commissioners, in December, you voted a preliminary recommendation for the Greater Union Baptist Church. And uh, this past January, the owner and congregation uh, consented in writing to the designation. So you may now consider a final recommendation to city council. This 136 year old church building was designed by nationally significant architect William Laverne and Jenny. It was built in 1888 by a Unitarian congregation who worshiped and hosted cultural events here for four decades. Then in 1928, the church was bought by a Black Baptist congregation who for the past 94 years has maintained the building. The congregation led by Reverend Dr. Walter McCray has requested this landmark designation. Church is located at 1956 West Warren Boulevard in the near West Side community area. In your preliminary recommendation, you found that Greater Union meets four criteria for designation, including criterion one for its heritage values, particularly aspects of society and culture. The building that houses Greater Union Baptist traces its origins back to a universalist congregation known as the Church of the Redeemer that was established on the near west side in 1856. 
the congregation began to meet in this building, the West Market Hall, a municipal market which stood in the middle of Randolph Street near Holstead. Four years after the congregation was established, the Civil War broke out and the pastor and 40 men of the congregation volunteered to serve in the Union Army and slavery. Mm -hmm. By 1886, the congregation at Redeemer had grown and raised enough funds to build the present brick church building. From its dedication in 1886, the original congregation worked within the building for 42 years. In addition to worship, Redeemer provided charitable aid and posted lectures that reflected progressive era concerns, such as temperance, the women's right to vote, racial division and the welfare of children. Between 1914 and 1917, Redeemer hosted a series of weekly lectures known as the West Side People's Forum, which was part of a national initiative known as the Open Forum Movement, which centered on public lectures to create a more informed and democratic population. Topics at the West Side People's Forum at Redeemer range from ways to end World War I, women's and immigrants' rights, confronting racism, municipal reform, and market capitalism. Speakers were important figures in their day, including Black civil rights activist Mary Church Terrell, who helped establish the National Association of Colored Women, member of British Parliament Samuel Ratcliffe, social reformer Grace Abbott, Abbott, director of the Immigrants Protective League, and Black scholar W. E. B. Dubois. In 1928, the church entered its second and current chapter when it was purchased by a Black Baptist congregation and rechristened as Greater Union, a transition recorded on a granite plaque on the facade. This congregation was for nearly a century maintained the building as a spiritual, social, and cultural home in one of the city's oldest Black communities. Greater Union has been shepherded by pastors and members of the congregation who contributed to the social well-being of the Near West Side through programs for young people, charity, and fellowship. In addition, the congregation at Greater Union is engaged in the civil rights movement through support of the NAACP, the Chicago Urban League, and non-religious political organizations. In addition to this heritage, preliminarily found the building also meets criterion three for its association with two energetic pastors who were and are civic leaders. First, there was Reverend Shelby Hamilton Graham, pastor from 1947 to 1967. He used his pulpit at Greater Union to support the spiritual needs of his congregation and the social needs of the African American community at large. During the Civil Rights Movement, Reverend Graham was active in the NAACP. He aided victims of the 16th Street Church bombing in Alabama and opposed discrimination and overcrowding in public schools in Chicago and the South. And two, there's Reverend Dr. Walter A. McCray, who served as pastor at Greater Union from 1996 until 2002, and who then returned to the pulpit in 2018, where he continues to serve. Dr. McCray has increased Greater Union's community outreach and charitable programs. He is also a nationally recognized scholar, a biblical scholar, who has published in lectures and lectured about scripture from an Afrocentric perspective. In addition to heritage and people, you found that the building also meets criterion for, for example, your architecture. Greater Union, Greater Union Baptist Church is a massively scaled and well-proportioned church building with distinct detail. The design reflects the Romanesque revival style with its heaviness, its deeply set round arch windows, portico entrances, eyebrow dormers, and ornament derived from nature. What makes Greater Union stand out, though, are the refinements of its, of its architect, William LeBaron Jenny, who articulated his design philosophy in print throughout his career. Jenny's fingerprints at Greater Union include the building's top wall surfaces with ornament 
it is incorporated into the wall structure rather than merely applied to its surface. And his use of the diaper pattern, small re repeated geometrical motifs set adjacent to one another, a form of decoration that Jenny borrowed from medieval architecture and manuscripts. Jenny was also unusual in his day for using a monochrome palette used to great effect at greater union. Dark red brick, red sandstone, and terracotta are left on glaze to display the natural color of these ceramic and stone materials. Finally, the single large gable on each facade reflects Jenny's preference for the use of fewer singular elements at larger scale rather than repeating forms at smaller scales. <clears throat> This is the auditorium at Greater Union, which is located on the second floor. It's a soaring worship space, as you can see, with massive hammer beam trusses built up of laminated lumber, also a trademark technology of the building's architect. The ceiling is finished and varnished southern common boards. Curved pews arranged in an Akron plan are set on a slope floor that faces the raised chancel reserved for the choir, pulpit, and baptistry. Each transept of the church features dazzling opalescent stained glass windows designed by the Chicago firm of Macaulay and Miles, including this depiction of the New Testament parable of the sower, which itself is based on an 1850 painting by John Francois Millet. And there is this allegory of charity represented as a mother caring for her children. And finally, in the South Transept, there is this description of the Madonna holding the child Christ based on a 1514 painting by Raphael. These three windows were commissioned by members of the original Redeemer congregation as memorials for deceased loved ones. As has been noted, Greater Union was designed by William McLaren Jenny, an architect who absolutely meets Criterion 5 as a designer of national importance. Jenny achieved this significance for the development of the first steel frame skyscraper in Chicago, the insurance building of 1885. Jenny also developed a, a personal design philosophy that helped clear the way for progressive architecture to flourish in Chicago in the late 19th century, including the Chicago and Prairie schools of architectural thought. While well, Jenny designed a range of building types, it is his commercial buildings that he is most remembered and praised. Most of these were built in Chicago after the fire when Jenny became a leading architect in rebuilding the center city. Four of these survive, uh, four of these Jenny Ropes survive. They are the Second Lighter Building, the Ludington Building, the Manhattan, and the New York Life. All of these Jenny Design buildings are designated Chicago landmarks. And during his long career, in addition to Greater Union, Jenny designed these other three church buildings of which just two survive, and of these Greater Union is by far the most intact with respect to Jenny's design intent. In your preliminary recommendation of December, you found that Greater Union also meets the separate integrity criterion. And here's the uh, comparison of uh, 1901 photograph when the building was just 20 years old in the current condition. And it's very clear that this particular historic building retains fantastic integrity especially considering that for most of its history, this has served a community that has endured economic disinvestment. Credit for the building's fine integrity uh, really goes to the current congregation who has maintained the fabric for nearly a century. One aspect of integrity is setting, which has changed dramatically around the church. Here's another comparison that shows the neighborhood around the building. Uh, in 1920 and currently. So the construction of the United Center and its associated parking lots has really changed the setting around Greater Union. Um, it is therefore a great survivor, which further argues for its preservation. 
So in conclusion, I want to again acknowledge that Pastor Reverend Dr. McCray have requested designation and have consented to it. Again, I wanted to acknowledge the work of many members of the congregation, the pastor who conducted oral interviews with Preservation Chicago. And thanks again to Preservation Chicago for transcribing that, uh, those, those testimonies is very important. So it's the context for the designation report. The building is located in the 27th Ward and Alderman Burnett is in support. So your preliminary recommendation identified the significant historical and architectural features of the building as all exterior elevations, including roof lines of the building. And you have before your final recommendation to city council to that effect. And I'm here to answer questions. And Pastor Reverend Dr. McCray is also in attendance. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Matt. Um, for the wonderful presentation and the report. Um, any questions, uh, commissioners, before we hear from um, Reverend Dr. McCray? Uh, seeing none, um, no further questions. Let's hear, I know the Reverend Dr. McCray is here. Um, would you like to make a statement? Yes, I would like to make a statement. All right. Thank God for being here. This is in addition to the remarks that we made on the first time around. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank you, commissioners and uh, chairman, and to the chairman, the members of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks, and to other civic-minded citizens. Once again, I, gospelizer Dr. McCray, am here as a pastoral representative of the Greater Union Baptist Church. Our deacons, our trustees, our team members, and our entire congregation and the church um, voted enthusiastically to pursue this landmark designation with the city of Chicago. First, I would like to say thank you to Preservation Chicago who are working closely with us in this endeavor. We acknowledge Ward Miller, executive director and the team of Preservation Chicago. We mentioned Mary Lou Seidel, director of community engagement and her assistant. Then we would not be at this junction if, if the members of this commission and the city's officials had not expressed keen foresight, implicit support, and explicit affirmation for landmarking the edifice of Greater Union Baptist Church. We express appreciation to the representatives from the Historic Preservation Division, Chicago Department of Planning and Development, Daniel Kleiber, Matt Crawford, the report compiler and Patrick Piska, photographer principal for the city of Chicago. On the calendar of our nation, we know this season of February as Black History Month, initiated by Carter G. Woodson. It is most appropriate at this time to uplift those historical persons and events which have significantly contributed to the uplift of persons and communities of African descent. When architect William LeBaron Jenny designed the edifice for the Church of the Redeemer, we are certain that he did not know what the full future had in store for this worship and community center that he had created. What has occurred down through the years in this sacred place has been special. A lot of the occasions have been special to the experience of African Americans. The rich report by Matt Crawford records several of these significant persons and happenings and should be read, appreciated, and disseminated widely. I choose to highlight a few of those things in this month of Black history. How blessed we are that the pastor and a number of men of the Church of the Redeemer had the courage to join the Union Army to fight for the end of slavery and the preservation of the nation. How proud we are to worship, fellowship, and serve in an edifice that held a lecture by the eminent Black scholar W.E.B. B. Du Bois at West Side, the West Side People's Forum of the Church of the Redeemer. Du Bois spoke on the world problem of the color line in February 1916. His discussion remains relevant to this very hour in our nation. 
Then also in our African-American heritage is the historic voice of Black civil rights activist, Mary Church Terrell, who helped found the National Association of Colored Women and who was a key Black activist in the movement to secure women's right to vote. God knows how much Americans need to vote in this crucial phase of the, in the development of American democracy and divisive politics. Thank God for those who serve as pastor of the Greater Union Baptist Church Congregation. We honor the organizer, Reverend Harry K. Knight, then the Reverend J.A. Royal, who led the congregation to purchase the church house, and the Reverend Shelby Hamilton Graham, who brought this congregation of Black believers to a zenith of worship and service. Of course, there were other ministers and parishioners who carried on this church house, carried on in this church house, and who made significant contributions in the lives of this people of God. We should enrich ourselves by reading the oral histories in the report. Yes, we could note Deacon Ray Brown, Reverend Maudine McCurin Wordlaw, Molly, Mother Molly Henderson, Pastor Robert Morgan, and many others. Personally, I am grateful to God for allowing me to pass the Greater Union once in the past and again in the present. Unbeknown to architect Jenny, his building has provided me a community-based place to exposit my understanding of scripture. We gave, he gave a place to advocate that the scripture is pervaded by the presence of black and African persons and nations. And this identity changing information deserves to be published in the near community through our church and to be broadcast through the church's IT platform throughout the far reaches of the globe. In this month of black history, we say thank you to the city of Chicago for seriously considering granting our church building as a landmark. Thank you for doing your part in setting this historical structure on a hill. You are honoring the transformative education that this historic place has embodied for nearly a century and a half, and as expressed in the presence of the two Christian congregations that has used and noted this space on Warren and Damon as a special meeting place for our church home. Peace. Thank you so much, Reverend Dr. McCray. Um, commissioners, uh, any questions for Reverend Dr. McCray or the congregation here today? Commissioner Cox. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, no, uh, no questions, but I just want to uh, commend uh, the Reverend Dr. McCray uh, for your leadership in uh, recognizing the kind of cultural um, preservation and uh, connection between you know, preservation culture and preservation of buildings. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we need more uh, spiritual leaders like yourself uh, on the South and West side uh, to step forward to make sure that these amazing edifices are, you know, um, stewarded to the next generation and uh, understanding the landmark status is one of many ways to do that. Uh, I just appreciate your example and your congregation's leadership in doing so. And I hope that there will be many, many blessings that uh, accrue to the, to the congregation and to the church as a result of this landmark uh, designation. So just thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cox. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Cox. Um, commissioners, any other comments? Um, I too just want to uh, compliment you for for your good work and, and working with so many other advocates here to get to this point. Um, it's truly an exceptional building, um, and um, you know, of course, its 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 significance to the city is 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 profound. And um, so, this is really exciting. Um, Commissioner Burns, uh, I I echo my fellow commissioners accolades and um, want to say thank you so much Reverend Dr. McCray to everyone in your congregation who's done so much to maintain this building. I took the time just yesterday afternoon um, 
to drive past and pull over and take a few minutes to appreciate the magnificence of this building. And in particular, um, I echo Matt Crawford's comment about the integrity of the building. It's yeah. very impressive and it has everything to do with the love and care of your congregation. So I'm very excited to see this advancing and wish all the best to everyone involved in this project. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. All right, thank you, Commissioner Burns. Um, any other uh, comments, commissioners? Seeing none, um, I'd like to request a motion to adopt the final landmark recommendation for the Greater Union Baptist Church. We have a motion. So moved, Commissioner Burns. Commissioner Burns has made a motion. Do we have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Cox is seconded, do, uh, and we'll do the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Ponce. Yes, absolutely. All right, Commissioner Ponce is a yes. Uh, Commissioner Rubin. Enthusiastic, yes. All right, um, thank you. And Commissioner Tolliver. Yes. Commissioner Tolliver is a yes, and I am yes. Um, and the motion carries unanimously. This is really exciting. Congratulations and um, good luck, and we're really, we're really excited about this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, moving to the program committee report. Um, the recommendation to the Illinois Historic Sites Advisory Council on nomination to the National Register of Historic Places, the Laramie State Bank Building in the 37th Ward, 5200 West Chicago Avenue, Alderman Emma Mitz. Um, report on suggestions received from the public for possible Chicago landmark designations. Um, and uh, uh, Commissioner Tolliver has this report. I want to report that the program committee met on January 24th to hear the public comments on 11 suggestions for possible Chicago landmark designation that have been received from the public since the previous program committee meeting. The suggestions and comments have been forwarded to Historic Preservation Division staff for further review and consideration. No action by the full commission is needed. I also want to report that the program committee reviewed on behalf of the full commission, one nomination to the National Register of Historic Places. The commission's review of this nomination is under its authority as a certified local government under the National Historic Preservation Act, which gives the commission the opportunity to comment on National Register nominations for Chicago property. The nomination is listed on today's commission agenda and is for Laramie State Bank Building 5200 West Chicago Avenue in the 37th Ward. The program committee voted to recommend that the full commission support this registered nomination. You have received a recommendation to that effect in your packets. Thank you, um, Commissioner Tolliver. Um, commissioners, any questions for Commissioner Tolliver? Uh, seeing none, um, I'd like to request a motion to approve the recommendation to the program committee of the program committee uh, on the nom on the one nomination to the National uh, Register of Historic Places. Um, do we have a motion? So moved, Commissioner Ponce. Thank you, Commissioner Ponce. Has made a motion. Um, do we have a second? Seconded, Commissioner Rubin. Commissioner Rubin has seconded, uh, and we'll do the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Burns. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. Uh, Commissioner Cox. Yes. Mr. Cox is a yes as well. Uh, and I think that's to everyone. Uh, I'm a yes as well. Uh, and the um, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, and then we'll move to now to the permit review committee reports um, for the um, reports of projects reviewed on January, at the January 12th, 2023 permit review committee meeting. Um, and um, Diana Cavallo has the um, report today. Thank you, Chairman. 
The permit review committee reviewed five projects at, at its January 12th meeting. All five projects were approved with conditions. The report summarizing the scope of the proposed projects and the committee's decisions was included in your packets. And this report is for your information and for the record. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, um, Diana. And uh, we'll move now to the report on permit decisions by the commission staff for the month of uh, January 2023. And Emily Barton has the report. Thank you, Commissioner. So for the month of January 2023, staff reviewed 155 permit applications and a total of 179 reviews were performed by staff with the average number of days to issue approval or corrections being 3.2. Excellent. Um, thank you so much. Uh, questions uh, for Emily, um, commissioners? Seeing none, thank you so much. Um, that gets us to the end of our uh, agenda today. Um, this is, uh, there being no further business, uh, I'd like to request a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mr. Tolliver has made a motion to adjourn. Who was the second? Commissioner Burns. Uh, Commissioner Burns made a, a second, thank you. Uh, and the roll call, uh, Commissioner Rubin. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ponce. Yes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Cox. Yes. Excellent. Commissioner Cox, yes. And I'm a yes. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, thank you all uh, so much uh, for your time today and have a great rest of your day. Uh, the permit review committee meeting is not, uh, will not occur today. So we'll see you next month. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye.